GFI dude and I walked up to this and said, man, if this was a real gun, pretty sick, right? It would be insane. Yeah, so if it weighed like five pounds as an SBR, excellent. That'd be awesome. But we're here talking to Nelson and he tells us it's an airsoft. How you guys doing? Hey man. Yeah, this is one of our uh, uh, many products that we distribute. It's an EMG International uh, Knights Armament PDW gas blowback airsoft rifle. Uh -huh. These are designed to be to emulate the real gun as closely as possible without being a real gun. It's full travel bolt, much like the real thing. As select fire, much like the real thing. Trigger breaks pretty much like a real rifle would. Resets, it's got bolt catch on it. So when you run out of rounds in the magazine, you box the bolt back and then you can drop it just like the real rifle, if it existed. Um, overall, it's a good training tool, a cool little toy to have, fun thing. Very good construction, press overall with it. Uh, we're a distributor of this at Z-Shot. So if you're looking for a fun, cool toy to play with, something to, uh, do some target shooting, some training, this is a great option. Uh, have, have airsoft guns, I, I haven't really been paying attention to them over the years, have they, you said this is high quality construction, have they addressed the needs of airsofters to have that because they've been breaking in the field? Because guys who go out and run a gun with airsoft guns, they're putting some heavy wear on them, right? Absolutely, yeah. I so mean, it's like you're in a normal war. Guys who laugh at that have an airsoft, true or false? Absolutely true, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as, as airsoft gets I'm talking bigger, wear and tear on the gun, guys. That's overall, yeah. Wear and tear is the same. It's exactly like with real guns. We're making, we have to make these things stronger, better, more highly engineered, better materials overall, just because this thing's growing, everyone's playing this, people are treating these more and more like they would their real steel firearms. So we need to follow up with that and make things better, stronger, more uh, durable. <laughs> How do I adjust the feet per second on that bad boy? These things come at a static FPS. These are pre-designed to be sub 400 FPS, so they're legal in most airsoft fields and okay. airsoft games. Um, Is there a trend towards that? There's a trend, yeah. So because sub, people were umping their velocity, right? Exactly. Illegally yeah. and getting people hurt. Sub 400 FPS guess. is what uh, yeah. research has shown to be the safe levels around where it's it's okay to shoot someone at pretty much point blank range and not do any detrimental damage, no penetration of the skin. Yeah, assuming protective gear, goggles, Absolutely. mask, and whatever else you want to wear. Eye protection is fundamental. Yeah. Wow. Do you airsoft, Nelson? Yes, I do. You have a good time doing it, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. It's a lot Who's of fun. Who's the team you shoot with? Uh, I play with a number of teams. I play with the Z-Shot team we've got here, and also am the head of the Ohio State University's Airsoft Club. You're the head? Yes, sir. Dude, you're the tactical guru I'm I talking am, to. Uh, yeah. I wanted him on camera because we were talking off camera. I was like, oh, this guy kind of knows the yeah, Airsoft I'd say so, a little bit. I've been in this for about uh, five, six years, which is actually a lot shorter than the majority of people around you who have been here for 10, 20 years in this stuff. So I've only seen so much, but I've been fortunate enough to experience a lot of different games, a lot of different stuff. Now, that's a great rifle. And remind viewers what brand and make and model that particular one is. So this is an EMG International um, Knights Armament PDW. Gas there you go. Airsoft rifle. Okay, and then PFI dude has pulled off a squad automatic weapon. Absolutely. I have no M249 idea. 249-ish. Why I'm getting excited about airsoft guns, but dude, I Dude, let me say this, and I've always defended airsoft and paintballing on my right. channel, and I, I don't really care for it when guys roll in and act like it's ridiculous. Right. Because a lot of the training you can get in a very well-organized, well-refereed, uh, field I think will translate to a lot of different fields. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. It's, and I, when I mean fields, I'm talking like uh, force on force for real. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So well, some of our products are actually designed specifically we'll for go back here so we're not military law enforcement. For these nice people. Yeah. So items such as... Feel free to pull whatever gun you want off the wall there. So this oh, is cool. an American oh, did PTW. That just go off? <laughs> no, I hit my arm on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is an American PTW. It's built off of the Sistema PTW system. PTW stands for Professional Training Weapon. These airsoft rifles were originally designed for military and law enforcement and individuals to use these in training force of force situations. So these are pretty much the best of the best, highest quality airsoft rifles you can get. Designed to be super rugged. Um, for the Similar. law enforcement community, it Absolutely. sounds like, or the yeah. military community. Absolutely. So they're very expensive. This one specific model is about 2800 bucks. Wow. 
Yeah. Oh, Holy cow. Get what you pay for, it. It is available to the civilian market. Absolutely, that's very, very true. Uh, it's got responses unlike any other airsoft rifle you'll see out there. It's pretty much instant once you pull that trigger that BB's leaving the barrel. And it oh, is... Okay, let me ask you, stop right there. So you say response, so on other versions I may get a little bit of a delay. It's very clear you can tell because they are electro-pneumatic systems uh -huh. and every time you pull the trigger, it runs a motor which turns a set of gears and then Correct. pulls a piston back and then drops that. So that's a lot of mechanical action, actions happening after you pull that trigger. Whereas these systems are so highly tuned and so heavily over-engineered fundamentally that they respond insanely fast. Wow. You want to grab a feel of that? Uh, I can look at that. It looks like a 6,000 series lower. Uh, what would you say, PFI aluminum upper too? So there's no plastic in that. Not at all. This is the yeah. majority of components on these American PDWs are real AR-15 components. So that is a real AR-15 upper receiver okay, that's been it. modified. So and this is one of our in-house brands. So this one actually isn't a Knight's rifle. Okay. However, it does take a lot of inspiration from Knight's, including the rail system on it, which is the uh, URX 3.1, 10.75 inch. How much money did your gun cost that you fight with in your games? Uh, mine's about... Unmodded, because I know you put mods on it. True or false? 450, and yes, I do. <laughs> I know, they are I have a lot of... Uh, of course, I'm that way with real guns. Yeah, oh yeah, you have to. So the way I run 450, my real... 450, 450 dollars. The way I run my real AR-15, I've set my airsoft gun up to look and feel fundamentally exactly like it because I like the cross training capabilities of that. Because right. I started shooting real firearms before I started playing airsoft and I found this to be a cool, fun training platform and then I just kind of, it snowballed into me playing and me getting involved. Which one do you shoot more, Nelson? Your airsoft or your real AR-15? In the last three months, my real seal, quite a bit more. Yeah, your real one? Yeah. How many ARs do you have? Just one? Uh, I have two. There you go. I was worried about them there yeah. for a Primarily, and I have a pretty bare bones. That's pretty cool the way they've modded so, a regular yeah, mag. Yeah, that is a too. real mag, cool P mag that's been modded with the internals of the. Uh, What's the round capacity on that, Nelson? It's adjustable from 30 to 120. And do I have three shot burst full auto on this sucker? You have select fire, so it's full auto. It can be set up in two to three round bursts. And you said electric in this one or gas? The, this is electric power. It uses a battery. Okay. What volt? Uh, it can run anywhere from 8.4 volts up to 14. So it's, it's adaptable. It's very, absolutely. It very is cool. very heavily computer controlled. It has all the computer systems within it to self-adjust to whatever you happen to be running in it. So if I'm standing down range at 100 yards, do I have to worry about you hitting me in a game with that gun? Oh, absolutely. It's at 100 yards, you can nail me and I will feel it. You will feel it. For sure. <laughs> oh, I can guarantee that. At 100 yards. Oh, That's yeah. pretty excellent. So it might take me a couple shots, but okay. I'll get you. <laughs> okay, and do you snipe people at that range in your games? Uh, here and there sometimes. That's pretty much about the maximum range of the majority of these guns, right about 100 yards. 75 to 100 yards is now. 50 is ideal though, right? You can just own Absolutely. people at 50. Because these pellets are only traveling at about 400 FPS at ranges that far, people can actually dodge them to an effect. It's yeah, difficult if they see it. not paying attention, absolutely. But, uh, PFI can do that with real bullets, actually. Yeah. It's oh, called wow. bullet time. <laughs> yeah. Grab Matrix. Yes. Keanu Reeves. Bro. What gram are you shooting as far as the weight of So bullets? these, um, the majority of players tend to use about 0.3 grams. Okay. Um, so about a third of a gram right around there uh, is the main player weight. People use all the way from uh, 0.2 gram, a fifth of a gram, to uh, 0.25, um, 0.28s, 0.3s. The weights of the projectiles vary very greatly, but the heavier the weight of the pellet, the better it holds its flight path. Right, more retained uh, velocity. And Absolutely, yeah, it's just pure It'll physics. hit harder when it gets there, too. Uh, well, I paintballed a lot once upon a time, yeah. and I have I airsofted well. yeah. a lot. So at your field, are guys getting hit not calling it? Is that a problem? That does happen from time to time. Fortunately, players who tend to be repeat cheaters kind of get um, cycled out of the community overall. They realize that they can't keep doing this. Uh, nobody likes it. They get singled out. So they realize they've either got to shape up, stop cheating, or exit the The sport. word will get out exactly. in your community because exactly. you're going to have a community that you'll your We do. We have a major community. Yeah. Like Airsoft Ohio is the name of our community. In Ohio. So what kind of people come? Do you have uh, cops that come play with you, civilians? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, just well, all types of people, everyone, all walks of life. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, We've got people who are veterans, uh, seasoned veterans, 30-something years in the service. They come play, have some fun. Um, kids who are 14 years old, 
play a little Call of Duty. I think this is cool. Absolutely. So, see those kids out there too. Uh, there's some out great airsoft channels on YouTube. I've watched some of their videos. There's a guy in uh, Scotland or something that's done uh, airsoft. Scout the doggy. Yeah, yeah, he's Scotty Dog. Yeah. I love that guy. And he's been doing airsoft videos for 10 years. Wow. At least. In a long time, and so I, I would want to get the word out to anybody who's watching this video is that if you can't get out and shoot the ammunition, you don't have time, you don't have a range, dude, go airsoft. Absolutely. You, you will have to hook into a really cool group though, because I find that that will make or break your your uh, less uh, non-lethal force on force. Yes. Yeah. Good group. Any other guns you want to show us? Um, well, that, What's the uh, round capacity on that one, dude? Yeah. LMG? That would be your gun, I'm thinking. Yeah. LMG, this box mag holds about 1,200 rounds. So <laughs> that keep that awesome. running for quite a good while. So if you see me at 100 yards so with that, fun. I better watch out. Yeah, because I'm just going to spray it. Put a couple hundred in your direction. What do you guys do with the BBs that are laying around on the field um, after all these years of playing some in the same fields, place? Uh, Majority of the time they're just left there because there are specific sanctioned areas where we're really only going to be playing airsoft for a long yeah. time. So they're just kind of left there, littered. They're everywhere, aren't they? But we purposely try to keep the games to the same areas, so we're making sure we're only littering a specific place instead of everywhere. But they do make biodegradable airsoft pellets okay. that do break down. I bet you they're not as high performance as the other ones, though. Surprisingly enough, uh, with the manufacturers in this industry, some of them are. They really? Pretty much exactly That's what I've been shooting. Yeah. It's just. I'm once, green. Cost more money. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. They cost a little bit more, but it's not prohibitive by any means. Okay. You care about the environment, which you should. So, it's uh, not something that's impossible to find. This is my wife, Nelson, and the boys and I used to shoot, remember this? The airsoft guns in the house? They were the Maruris I oh, brought back from yeah, Japan. Yeah. Cock once, shoot once, yeah, but they were the Sigs, the Glocks, and man, they were fun. Oh, We'd go in the I house. Talk about those BBs. They're like, awesome. When I was in the yard last, oh, still flying them. Yeah, still flying them. Uh, we fight in the backyard, we fight in the house. The boys loved it, and yeah. they hurt when you get oh, hit. Yeah. They weren't 400 feet per second, but I bet you 300. You know, for a spring yeah. cock or single shot. Yeah. Uh, not single shot, I had a magazine about like 25 rounds or something. Yeah, with the old Tokyo Marine guns, they probably were limited to about 280 FPS with a 0 okay. gram BB. Yeah. Because they have a one tool limitation in Japan. That's why, yeah. that's what we were shooting yeah. with. So in America, the majority of places we go play have a 1.5 joule, so that means 400 FPS with 0.2 gram. Okay. Wow. Let's look at a couple more guns before we wrap it up there, Dave. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, these are variations of kind of the yeah. same thing. So, so these are made by a company called GNP. They're a continuation of those Knights Armament SR-16 rifles. Talk real loud, too. We've got a short CQB kind of version, and then yep. mid-length, and then rifle length. Kind of different approaches to the same fundamental rifle. Do you have to have the orange muzzle on all of them? Yes, to do. Upon point of sale, uh, the orange tip is required by law. And what do you see at your field? Guys paint them? Yeah, once uh, someone has purchased the airsoft rifle, you're permitted to change it out and Got paint it. them. But as we always recommend and as we always say, once you change that coloration from orange to black, you should treat these airsoft rifles as if they're real guns. I couldn't agree more. Even, I think you should do that anyhow. Yeah, even with the orange rifles. blow an eyeball out. I always recommend following the three firearms safety Absolutely. rules. Absolutely. The no These are not toys. Why you don't have to, yeah. I, and if, if parents, if you're seeing this video and go, hey, I'm going to go buy my airsoft or my kid an airsoft gun, I say rock on, but you better teach them the uh, yeah. fundamentals of safe firearms handling. Teach firearm safety. Yeah. Something I highly recommend. Uh, you're doing a great job, by the way, Nelson. Really good, actually. Uh, talk to us. So these are those American Sistema PTWs I was talking about earlier. These are the Same. super expensive $2,800 gun. This one's probably easily 6K with all the fancy accessories on it because this is a real specter. Okay. Yeah. And, and that would give you sport. massive cool points when you show up the field with that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, all the little kids will kind of come touch, pick up your gun. Okay, let me ask you them. this, though. Do you have guys that show up at the field and they got all this kit, multi-cam on, yeah. they got the high-end guns, they spent thousands of dollars, and they absolutely suck in the oh, fight? Oh, you see a lot of those. It's you see funny. a lot of that. Yeah. And Not a ton, but you do see it. And do you ever have the sleep? Because when I paintballed, we'd have the sleeper guys that had low-end kit, maybe very basic camo, but they had really good cardio, and man, they were good shooters. Absolutely. I, Those guys would own us. I like to say sometimes that I'm kind of that guy who showed yeah. up to some of the bigger ops and just jeans and a t-shirt with a nice big paintball mask on, cheap looking gun, and rock some people sometimes. <laughs> it's a good time <laughs> to do that. People are unsuspecting <laughs> that you've played this for a long time. We uh, went on a paintball 
uh, fight one time on this field, Nelson, and uh, it's my son and I, Tactical Doodle, and we were considered woods players because we show up camoed. Back then, that was not cool. Tourney players were cool. So they we went against a team that had the tourney, everything, you know, the jerseys, the, the sponsorships, and we owned them, and it was hilarious. They were pissed. That's, like, that's how hilarious. Do we get, how that's did great. we get beat by woods players? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a, I'm way, way aggressive in the play, though. I, I was always... That's I, where it's fun. I, yeah, so, charging guys. These are cool. These are some more Amoeba guns. This is one of our house brands. It's more unique style, a little bit different, something that players like to see, different... Uh, construction for more affordable guns that are far less than the uh, PTW systems. Great guns, very high end on terms of general AEGs. What uh, brand and model are you running with right now? You said about $450, what is it? I, I currently use a combination, I primarily use a Titman M4, which is nice. one of the most common guns yeah, I Tittmans use. Yeah, Titmans are great. Man. I like them a lot, they're a fantastic gun. Uh, my kind of like the savage of the airsoft world. Yeah. A lot of gun yeah, for yeah. the money. They know, they know how they've done it for a long time. Their paintball guns are fantastic. And Absolutely. they transfer that over to an airsoft system that works great. I have three Titmans, actually. Paintball. Fantastic. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, right. 98, A2. Um, yeah, this is the uh, M110. Yeah. It's uh, what we're emulating here with an airsoft gun. Uh, and then we've got some of our in-house brand Ares sniper rifles. Cool stuff. Some things that excite the kids and <laughs> make you feel a little bit uh, operator. <laughs> So if guys, do you see guys show up with a big bolt gun like this on the field? Absolutely. These uh, these bolt guns do have their applications. They can be tuned to outshoot and outrange the majority of other electric guns that we have out here. So uh, given the right money, time, patience, and attitude, you can be an effective sniper. Do you have any on your team that are snipers and come out with this type of equipment and you use them accordingly? Yeah, I have one guy. He actually was um, a Delta sniper years ago. We haven't pried much information out of him, but he's really good at it. It's mostly patience overall is how he plays. That's that's where you excel. Put an adult diaper on and stay in the same position for 20 hours. Pretty much, I guess so. Okay, so we've talked about, did you, and I'm sorry I don't know the brands. Oh, Amoeba, no I see them right there. Yeah, so American Aries, PTW. Amoeba, our in-house brand, American PTW. We've got GMP branded, Lights nice Armament, Classic Army, Stoner. You'll see them around there, and I'm sure a lot Absolutely. of these guys where they live, they have air shops, airsoft shops. Let's they can go, go yeah. buy. So that might be the pl best place to go get an airsoft gun. That's where I would recommend. Because then you got service, and guys can help you in the sport, and you'll actually um, make contacts at the sto store where you know where to go play. Yeah. And and they get to know you, you get to know them. Uh, so it's this the best is one way to thing get in your community. You, yeah. Do it locally, and you'd probably be better served that way. Um, and we'll end right here at Bolt. I see right here an Echo One still. Yep. So these are against the uh, continuation of those Knights Armament style guns. There's a number of different companies that produce them with uh, varying features. Some are a little nicer, some are a little cheaper. These ones are good for someone on a budget. They have the majority of the features. They feel like it. They're nice. They still work perfectly fine. But if you want this or that, or certain factors you want realism to um, budget gun. We've got a solution for you if you want a Knights Armament license rifle. Let me ask you this, so if I go out and I, I beat that and I, I really put some wear and tear on it, and am I going to be, what would break first on that gun versus what you showed us over there? It really depends on how you're playing. If you're shooting it very, very aggressively. I'm shooting it really aggressive. You might I, I'm crawling through mud and I'm I'm getting in fights with guys at the field and uh, butt stocking them in the head with it. Awesome. You butt stock someone in the head with it, it <laughs> I'm just might totally kidding. break in half. But, <laughs> You hit them hard enough, <laughs> but internally, maybe a piston might blow. It's, it's hard to say. Okay. There's a lot of points where these systems can you, fail, but they're engineered quite well to not. Do you see guns going down in the fight, and if so, what brands do you see break most? Uh, we do here and there. Um, it generally tends to be the cheaper brands, brands where you're paying sub $150, sub $200 for an airsoft Get what budget. you pay for once again. Exactly. That's the, that's the best way to put it. Dude, I'm with you, though. I don't think I need to go out and spend $2,500 no, on a gun, you can definitely but for $5,500, $5, I should be able to get a pretty solid, Absolutely. durable, accurate airsoft gun with select fire. Absolutely. And then they'll spend a couple hundred dollars more for extra batteries, upgrades, sites, maybe another 500. But a thousand, I bet you I got an awesome airsoft. A thousand dollars will get you an awesome airsoft. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. You did a good job, man. Thank you. Uh, this is Nelson Pang. Did I say that right? Yep. And Pang remind everyone what your distributor is. We are with Z-Shot. There you go. You did an excellent job. I did the booth Thank report because I like this guy. And he cool. knows his stuff. Thank you. Gold Star Booth Review right here from Appreciate Nelson. It.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.